Historic Cooktown is a small frontier town located in the far north of tropical North Queensland with a unique character based on years of geographic isolation. Renowned for its rich Aboriginal culture and pioneering past, this small, friendly coastal town holds a unique place in Australia's history as the site of the country's first non-Indigenous settlement. Discovered and settled by Captain Cook, his crew spent seven weeks on the site of the present-day Cooktown, repairing their ship, replenishing food and water supplies and caring for their sick and injured. In the past, Cooktown could only be accessed by four-wheel drive vehicles, but with the completion of the Seal Cooktown Development Road in 2006, it is now more accessible to everyone to discover and enjoy. When Captain Cook sailed into Cooktown in 1770, the town that honours his name, I bet he had no idea of the incredible black marlin fishing that takes place outside the Great Barrier Reef. If only the Endeavour had some outriggers and a sounder, imagine the fun they would have had. Fortunately today, I'm not on the Endeavour, I'm on Calypso. And my captain isn't Captain Cook, but he is very famous in the fishing world, Captain Tim Dean. Number seven ribbon, which is northeast of Cooktown. It's uh, around 40 miles south of uh, Lizard Island. It's a pretty serious office you have out here. Oh, it's a good part of the world, mate. You're sort of on the coal face out here. So, how many days a year do you actually get out and fish this area, or, or from Cairns? Uh, a to good Cooktown? season up here would be 80 days and eight. back to back. Yeah, back 80 to days. Back. Every day, in, in, in at the end of each week, change over whether it be Cairns or Cooktown or, or Lizard Island. Uh, fly people in and out of those places or they can drive into Cooktown there. So you got in at 6.30 last night. We left at 8.30 this morning. I'm sure you had to buy food, wash the boat. How, how do you put up with it for 80 days? Oh, the service is pretty good in there in Cooktown. Everyone knows that we're up here for the season and they support us and as we do them. We uh, store up with our you know, groceries and whatnot. That can be delivered to the dock, your fuel's there. Your water, your laundry ladies there, everything gets done overnight and you're back out here in the briny the very next day. Back into it now, obviously the fish that we are chasing is the black marlin and this area probably holds the biggest black marlin in the world. Every year in Cairns or the Great Barrier Reef up here in the northern section there's, there's giant black marlin caught. It's, it's consistent year in year out and has been for the last 42 years. There's no other place in the world like it simply for the fact that there's giant black marlin here every year. Yep. And when we're talking giant black marlin, obviously with snapper, it's a 20 pound snapper, with, with brim it's like four pound, the kilo King George Whiting. What is the mark on the giant black marlin? It's uh, a thousand pounds. That's four. what everyone's here to see or catch, let go. You know, that's the magical figure up here. So this is game fishing, Great Barrier Reef style out of Cooktown. About an hour and a half to the reef, we've now come outside the reef to deep water. We're fishing here because the current is pushing against an edge and hopefully pushing bait up which will attract the big fish. And our crew, our wonderful crewmen, both Muzz and Corey, have set up our spread for these big black fish. We've got a skip bait over here and a swim bait over here and Captain Tim is basically going round and round trying to persuade these fish to come up from the depths and eat our offerings. It's late in the afternoon, a lot of these bites take place in this afternoon sun. So hopefully you're going to see some pretty serious marlin action out of Cooktown. This is a scaly mackerel. And I have to say, any man would be happy to catch it, but we're actually going to rig this as a bait. And you may find it hard to believe, but this is the bait we're using to catch big black marlin. This is Corey Gillespie. Corey, you come from Florida, you work in a lot of boats. I assume you've rigged a few baits in your day. Uh, more than some, less than others. <laughs> That's a good call. Do you want to just run us through the technique of rigging this bait and getting it marlin ready? Absolutely. Uh, well, what we want to do first is we want to sew up this cavity here, keep water from getting in as little as possible. And we want to secure this hook to the front of the bait. And we also want to secure the body to the head of the fish so it doesn't come apart once we get the bite. And I see you've already gilled and gutted it? Yeah, we gill them, gut them, get the bloodline out. And that avoids, that keeps the bait from rotting and uh, lasts as long as possible. So show us your work, mate. All right. We start by getting the belly stitched up. First thing you want to do is you want to kind of get your finger in there and pinch it together. 
then you just want to work your way down, closing up that cavity. As you can see, it makes a little ridge right there, yep. holds that together tight. You want to do the same thing down the other side, and it'll close up your cavity. And we're reading this one as a skip bait? Yes, this will be our skip bait, which we run on the left. Yep. So you take your tag ends. Do a double. I've got a good tip for you in relation to knots. What's that? If you can't tie knots, just tie locks. <laughs> Always works. Now when you're putting the, the hook on the head, there's every boat's probably got a different way to do it. They're all right. They tend to come through the eye socket, poke the back end of the needle, through the mouth. Same thing on the other side. Yep. We also knock the teeth out to prevent it from chafing the Dacron in this process. That bit of tube you've got on the Dacron there, is that to protect the, the Dacron from the teeth or is it to actually hold the circle out away from the fish? It actually acts as holding the circle hook just where we want it away from the bait. And it also keeps, the, once it's tight, it keeps the circle hook from coming back and hooking the bait instead of the fish. Because that's how you lose a big fish? Absolutely. Especially on a bait this size when it's rough, it yeah. tends to jump and bounce around a lot. You want that hook staying in front of the fish and not in it. Especially with a circle hook because this hook has to be free to spin inside the Marlin's mouth to do its job. Now we're gonna take both tag ends and do the same thing we did here, except go through the pec fin bone and then cinch it down there. That'll hold the body to the head and the head to the hook. It's a work of hot line. It's a lot of work for, for one bait. But especially up here on the reef, each bait that goes out, that could lead to giant black marlin. So you want to make sure you do everything as you can to prevent, prevent losing the fish. And the other problem you have, of course, is wahoo, sharks, cooter. You can spend 20 minutes bringing a bait and they'll bite it off in three seconds. Absolutely. That must hurt a little. It hurts a lot, <laughs> especially, when, uh, especially when the toothy critters are out. Go through 20, 30 baits in a day easily. Now we gotta come back through the eyes and make sure the mouth is closed tight. Keep as little water as possible moving through the fish. So if you wanna catch a big black marlin, that is how you rig the bait, just perfectly. This fishing and bone tip was brought to you by boatsales.com.au. What depth of water are we fishing in and what are we actually trying to do? Well, right, right now we've got a run in tide. I can just take you through sort of why we're fishing the top of number seven here. There's a big ridge that runs out and it drops from around 60 metres, 70 metres, down to about 400 in the space of maybe 500 metres distance. It's just pretty well a sheer wall. Uh, the tide running in on that, all the bait stacking up on that edge and the big fish or small fish, you know, they'll be all stacking up there, feeding on each other and whatnot. So this tide's pushing in for about another two hours here, so we're going to flog it out and see how we go. So, so the tide hits that wall yep. and it pushes water up yeah. and with it it brings food. All on that pressure face, it's where all the bait will gather. That's pretty well how the reef works up here. Any pressure face is where your fish are going to be. You know, there's, that's pretty well all fishing in the world. Yep. You know, fish on your pressure faces, your mackerels, your dog tooths, your tuners, they're all going to sit there and hence the big marlin come in on them. So we've got two baits in the water. Why, why two baits? So some people think, oh, I'll put six in the water, I've got a better chance of catching one. If you see a big one come and eat when they really want to, You'll get six before you get to that rod. <laughs> oh, you leave all six? Oh, they'll go on. Yeah, yeah. They'll leave the big bait and then come in, follow the scad. A big, big black marlin feeding, you know, you want to deal with them one at a time. We'll take two, but one at a time will do, mate. Sure. Just you know, wait the time. Just, this, this is the way people have been fishing up here for the last 40 years. We, You know, it's worked for, it works now, it worked then. We're not here to reinvent the wheel. Sure, the technology gets a bit better, but the basics are the same. A swim bait, a skip bait. You know, you might see, have a lure fishing day now and then with the reef edges quiet, but nothing much changes up here. That's what's good about the place. <laughs> I 
bloke they called by Maz. You just got something small in here. Well, guess what? Yes, it's small, but I'm still struggling to wind the handle. Ugh. Unfortunately, this heavy gear is very hard to catch small fish on because it basically just knocks the fish over. But there's a bit of weight there, and weight may mean bait, may also mean dinner. It's a bit I of reckon weight, you should, um, might as well go to the chair. Yeah, he's gonna. Here we go. There's a bit of weight here. Get in the yeah. chair. Okay, the fish is growing. I'm moving to the chair. Thanks, Buzz. That's better. <laughs> Shark. Oh. Well, that is not what we're looking for. White tip reef shark. I must say, just a little fish. I don't know where I come from, but it's not what we're after, so we're going to let it go. We'll try and get back to this marlin bite. It's very exciting times. Tim just called me out of the cabin where I was having a little rest and said, Paul, get on the back deck. He's marked a fish, and that means the depth sounder has actually seen a marlin. It's a big fish, you can tell. And the boys, the crew, they're actually noticing a bit of surface activity. We've got a tide change coming up. Everything's starting to happen. So this is where we keep an eye on the water, because this is when that big fish could come up. And I am very, very excited. All right, there he is on the left. Nice fish. There he goes. Wind it up, get it on the surface. He's on you, Corey. He's on you, get ready. Ready? Oh! Got weight there? Okay, yep, yeah, good. Good, good, good. Well done. Okay. Yep. Turn the chair to the middle, that's it. Thanks, mate. I'm going to struggle to talk because I'm just going to wind Timmy's back and down this fish. He saw it. It is a marlin. And I just need to put some pressure on me. Steady. So Go I can... hard there, mate. That's it. Ugh. Lift you, wind yourself up in the chair there, Paul. That's better. That's fishing. Let's get rid of those thongs off you, mate. If you don't mind. All good, thank you. Skipper's given the call, the thongs are off. And left hand on that reel all the time. Thanks, Timmy. They're telling me to keep my left hand on the reel. And that is in case this line breaks. It's 130 pound IGFA line. If that line breaks this reel, we'll come and break my nose. I'm sure a few people wouldn't mind seeing that, but I don't like the blood rule. Look at this. This fish is literally pulling out of the chair. Straighten your legs up, mate. That's it. My right arm's hanging on. I'm using my body weight. Here we go. All 80 kilos. Here Miss we Christy, go. I'm lying. All 80 kilos to put pressure on this fish. Timmy is just pushing Calypso back into this sea. Hop out, mate. Hop out. 
Yeah, you're out of the ride there. Look at this for a fish. Come around here, TK. Come around here. Get around here. there quick. Look at this fish. It's a monster. Go, go. Get out and of there, the, guys. That is just gold. Look at him back there. Big black marlin, Timmy Dean Calypso. I've got to say I love your work. Get around this side, boys. Timmy, around the side, Dan. Here we go. Look at that. Woohoo! Look at that circle hook right in the corner of the jaw. And that's what marlin fishing's all about. Beautiful work. How big's this fish, you reckon, Muzz? Oh, 650. Yeah, 650, 700. Let him go. 650 pounds of black marlin. Let him go. Nice There she work. goes. Away she goes. Woo! Well done, mate. No, baby! Yeah. <laughs> Timmy! Woo! Well done, boys. Now, there's a bit of water leaves. I can help with that. But who cares? That's 650 pounds of Makaira Indica. I've had a shower, but it's all good. GBR, you beauty! Well, not more than 200 yards where we slept the night. The old Hydro Magnum went out and the rod just kept going bend, bend, bend. And just look at this for a fish. That has got to be the best fish I've caught after having my breakfast for quite a while. Thank you, Corey. Look at that. That is a coral trout. I've got to say, one of the best coral trout I've caught in a long, long time. Obviously, sitting down on the reef, you come up and swallow that hydromagnum. And the great news is, I've just finished breakfast, caught my dinner. That is a very, very cool surprise. Now, there's a small problem you get on the east coast of Australia called ciguatera, and it comes from red fish eating the coral and actually get the poison. Now, if you get ciguatera poisoning from eating these fish, you'll be a very, very unhappy boy for a long, long time. We've decided this coral trout is too big to eat because the bigger the fish is, the more chance of ciguatera poisoning. So I'm actually just swimming it now. We're gonna let him go. This is one trout's lucky, lucky day. worked our way through the passage between the reef and out into open water. What we're doing this morning, we're trolling up the outside of the reef, that's the east side, and we're working our way to the number 10 Ribbons Reef. It's the biggest of all the Ribbons Reefs, and as Tim told me over dinner last night, it is the Marlin Factory. He reckons that's where they make them, and that's where the big girls hang out. So we're heading that way, we're doing a bit of trolling. Not only does it conserve a bit of energy and fuel, but we also get the opportunity to catch some dinner and some baits. How's this beautiful little mackerel we caught just as we come out the passage? It just couldn't help itself with my little redhead Hydro Magnum. So, Mars, a bit better fish. It's a nice first run there, Paul, and had the real screaming. Now, I'm a bit confused because you went into the cabin to get a gimbal belt for me, and I turned around and you had this rod in your hand. Are you, you, are you like Lightning McQueen? You gotta be quick around here, mate. <laughs> I assume you don't get a chance to get a rod in your hands too often, Muzz, because you're always helping other people catch fish? Not very often. Ooh. We got a nice big bait there. Shark mackerel, is it? That it is. And that is a very, very good marlin skip bait, is it? Thank you very that much, is. Corey. Look at the size of That's that. That's a beauty. And you don't eat these fish? We don't. They are edible fish, but we prefer to time for a giant black mullen. Awesome. Well, bait it is. And it is. He's on you, Mars double header. Push it up, Corey. I don't know, it's just nice and steady, Corey. Uh, same one come in there. You got him on there, you're gonna get him on. Tiny. He's still there. Get a scat on the spin rod, guys, or something. There he goes again. <laughs> Film the bait. Got it that time. Push it up. Push it up. He's just dragging the bait. Push it up. Oh, look at that. I think he fell off, did he? Yeah. That is a tiny little black. 
tiny fish we saw it up on the bridge he's only about four feet long and we're fishing for marlin that are that wide across the eyes so he physically couldn't get that bait down he's got so we're trying to get the baits in and then maybe pitch him a small bait because we'd love to catch him just to show you how cool these fish are and it's interesting he would have probably been a little boy marlin you can get them from 10 kilos all the way through to 700 kilos amazing fish Big fish. I saw it come up on the bait. It's pulling me right out of the chair. The conditions are just unbelievable. What a beast. I just saw the dorsal come up and then the short but stiff bill. And you can see, it's lifting my entire body weight out of the chair. I've got to keep my legs locked, pull back with all my might, and then wind forward. Oh, how's that for power? 130 pound line. The drag is set at one third the braking strain, so you're looking at around 40 pounds, 45 pounds of drag, and he's taking line quite easily. I'm taking a deep breath. Oh, I cannot get a wind. Now, these are the moments you live for if you love catching big gay fish. Out of the water pool. Short, short pumps. Whew. I can see the fish. She's only about 15 foot down. See the line's just ticking off. There's nothing I can do at this stage to put plenty of pressure on with my entire body weight. Just try and lift her up. And when I say her, it will be a girl because all the big black male and a female. They actually grow at a similar rate to the males and they just take off. And based on catches from the Japanese longlining fleet through this area and also charter boats, 11% of the catch approximately is female, the other 89% male. Here she comes. Just want to get hold of the leader there, Paul. Just leave a little slack behind my gloves. Yep. Just keep taking up the slack so you've got a small loop. Yep. So if he decides to take off, it's not tight behind my hand and I can let him go. Any other tips as you get a big fish close like this, Muzz? Just back the drag off a little too once I get the leader. Keep your left <laughs> hand on the reel, that's a tip. As I nearly went over the side. Yes, hold on with your right hand, mate. Just try and increase that angle. You'll see the angle of the line in the water there is about probably 45 degrees, 50 degrees. The smaller that angle, the easier it is for us because we can then back back on the fish. When I say we, I say Tim. See how that angle's increasing or decreasing? Now Tim goes back. Here we go. Try and get line. Wind hard, Paul. Wind hard, mate, he's right there. Right there, doubles coming up. Short pumps, short pumps. That little mark is our double muzz. Oh, it's so is close, it? the double was right out of the water there, Paul. And how long is that double? Is it just short enough to whack the wind on leader on? That double is about eight foot long. Yep. Then we have 
12 foot one on leader and 18 foot from there for the fish. Probably just over, over a grand, you know, really big fish. So the plan is get her in as quick as I can? Quick as we can, mate. Big fish like this is sort of up to her at the moment. Well, in the words of my good friend Eric Atkinson, I'm trying! I'm trying! Try harder. <laughs> I've got every bit of weight and pressure on this fish I can. Locked legs. There's your rod tip coming up. OK, Timmy's just told me to go to a one-to-one -one retrieve. It's much like riding a bike when you're in high gear. You do well on the flat, but you're going to always struggle when you hit a hill. Well, this spice just hit a hill. I think that hill's Mount Everest. So I've gone one-to-one. -one. You can see I can now wind and just get one pump at a time. And on big fish like this, we literally say just an inch at a time. That's 50 metres to go. Beautiful. You keep that pressure up there, mate. Going hard there, that's good. Fish is coming up for you there, Paul. Beautiful. If it goes much longer, I'll be coming up for the fish. I'm going to need to explain. It's about 35 degrees, 98% humidity and not a breath of wind. It's making the job all that more pleasurable. Whoa! For those who are wondering, I'm actually tied into this chair. I'm only tied into the rod, which is why the knuckles on my right hand are very white. yourself up and back down the other rail. He hasn't even started with you yet. The wahoo just here. Get that peg marker up out of the water. See him there? Yeah, right. I see him. You don't want that peg marker. There's a wahoo just out there. We don't want him to bite our line. Look at the size of that. See the wahoo there, TK? Six foot behind the boat. Got a leader. I just cross these chains over. Yeah, he's too far away. It always is when the pressure just comes on. Just cross the chains over, undo them. Watch the rod there, push it in the middle. Stand yourself up. That's a bit shorter. Hand on the reel. Oh, yeah.
Sorry guys, I can see her again. There's the double, mate. She's right here. bucket on this boat. One of the greatest angling experiences of my life. I feel like I'm seasick, but I'm tipping by that I'm not. And I just had an outer body experience. I actually thought I was dreaming. At one stage a dream turned into a nightmare and then I saw that massive fish. Thank you for everyone who's followed me on this journey because one day I dreamed I might catch a billfish but never one that big. Holy snapping black marlin. Now we got an amazing look at that fish, those jumps early, some, some just staggering underwater footage by my good mate Daniel Jans, he's my underwater marlin man. And the reason we didn't hang on to it for ages is because that fish is so big. If we let her go and she's not 100%, there's big tiger sharks here that may eat her. I actually think I might have seen a few grazers from some fish on the side of her, I'll check the underwater footage later. But they are like foxes of the sea. There's a sailfish tagged off Hamilton Island many years ago and on the release card it said, fish is dead, floating upside down and bleeding. It did that after they let it go. Two years later it turned up off Hamilton Island and some anglers caught it. The other research with sonic tag shows that marlin like that will turn, go down about 30 fathoms, that's 60 metres on the old scale, and they'll just sit there for a couple of hours sulking, get their energy back, get rid of any lactic acid, then they'll cruise away, and those sonic tags gave us really good data. And the fish that was tagged and covered the most distance, and I'm pretty sure this is right, 7,992 kilometres in less than 360 days, and that's assuming it went in a straight line. Judging by the way that fish fought, there's no straight lines. I went to a concert once, and the big man was up the front singing and he thanked his band. Well, I would also like to thank these guys because without them, you don't catch fish like that. Muzz the legend, he was on the trace. Corey flew all the way from the other side of the world to help. Dan, my underwater man. Peter, my above cameraman, who I hope got those jumps, so I'm gonna have to strangle him. My great producer, Michael Dickinson, and the guru. Now, God always sits above. Well, that's where he is today, Timothy Dean. How big, Timmy? That's probably 1,050, mate. Tim, you make a living taking people to fulfil their ultimate fishing dream. The other day you said it's like the Everest of angling. Now I understand, mate. Oh, you do now. Yeah, that was a big, tough fish for sure, Paul. And how I saw the bite, it was just insane. And those three or four jumps here, how's the girth of those fish? Fish that size, you know, lots have been measured over the years. And, you know, they're in excess of 11 feet short length from the bottom of the bottom jaw to the centre of the tail and the, the average girth of fish that big, you know, up around the thousand is you know, over six and a half feet girth. That, so that's it's a really a lot of, lot of big fish there. Just insane. And now you told me something else before. The biggest marlin ever caught anywhere in the world during a tournament was on your boat. Tell me about that fish. 2001, right here where you caught that big fish. Uh, we caught a fish and um, back then you, were, you could weigh a fish in the tournament and, and we did and that fish uh, went 1,280 pounds. That is just a lot of big fish are caught on number 10 ribbon. It's, it's a place you come to fulfill that dream like you've just done, mate. Well done. Timmy, you're a champion. There's going to be a lot of people watching this around Australia, hundreds of thousands. Some of you will be fisher people and you'll be thinking as that fish come out of the water, that's what I want to do one day. But Tim, you must get a lot of angles who just think, I want to do that because that looks like fun. Oh, we do and, and we get people that, you know, they, they work all year just to come up and do a few days. It's a special part of the world. You know, there's a lot of good operations up here where people can come and fish. And as you've seen, um, when you put the time in, you, know, you get the result. Well, there was a movie once on TV called Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner. And the line that movie was, build it and they will come. If you want to build it, talk to Tim Dean, because he's got the ark, the beautiful Calypso, 
and he will find you the monster fish in the sea. Now, Tim, you're a big scary man, and I could die for doing this, but I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well done. No, dear, I'm going back up the tower. <laughs> Well, they say timing is everything, and for once I got my timing right because we've just come back to Cooktown and it is blowing a dog off a chain. Out there we had glass calm seas and I've had a few days to sit back and think about what just took place. Let me just say I can't believe it. That 650 pound black, its shoulders were this wide. And then to see the grander, that fish flying through the air effortlessly. What power they must have in that caudal fin to get up there where we can see them just shooting for the stars. I am truly blessed, such a lucky man to have had that fish on the end of my line. You know what? I support catch and release. That big girl is still out there. She's got your name on her. Catch up with Timmy because one day you two might have a date.